Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a quilt. It's called Twirling Stars, and it's from the Quilt Factory, and this is a Fab Five pattern. That means we need five fabrics, one yard each, so it's very simple to pick them. I've got a nice group here. This is from Clothworks, and it's called Flower Shop. So the top four here, those are for the patchwork, and then the last one is for the border. Now for this pattern, you want two that are a little lighter and two that are a little darker. So I'm gonna use these two here for the lights and these for the darks, and that should make a very pretty quilt. Now at this point, I like to take all of the fabrics and iron them nice and flat. Sometimes there's wrinkles when they come off the bolt and you can really get your cutting much more accurate if you iron first. All the fabrics are ironed nice and flat now. This top print, that's for the border. So I'm going to set it aside and we'll come back to that later. The other four are going to get subcut. Now it's not my pattern, so I can't give you the sizes, but the Quilt Factory's patterns are well written and very easy to follow. Now this pattern has very little waste, which I love, but we are using up 35 of the 36 inches that are in each yard. So you just wanna be mindful of that when you cut. All the cutting is done and it's very easy because it's all in squares. What I'm going to do now is stack up all of one print into a stack. I'm gonna do that with each of the four prints, so we'll have four stacks. All right, everything is cut, and now the pattern has me label all of the different prints. So I'm just using some Avery stickers here. You can use a paper, you can use almost anything to label your fabrics. So we've got A, B, C is the outside border, and then we've got D and E. And the reason we labeled them is because we're going to pair these. So I've gone ahead and made some stickers for what we're going to pair together. So we're going to take half of the A's and they're going to get paired with half of the D's. Then we've got the other half of the A's. They go with half of the E's. We've got B's and D's. And then we've got B's and E's. We're going to work with one group at a time. So let's start with this group here. We're gonna take the lighter fabric, which is this one, and we're going to draw a line on the back side of all of these squares from corner to corner. So I like to use a very light pencil line. So if you are using, if you have a fabric that's slightly darker, even though it's still a light background, you might wanna use a silver pencil, a white pencil, just something that will show up just a little bit. All we have to do now is take one of these and one of these and put them right sides together. And then we're going to stitch on both sides of that line, quarter inch away. So I'm gonna stitch very carefully so my squares will be nice and accurate. I'm gonna go down the one side, swing it around and down the other side. Okay, once those are sewn, we're going to cut them in half right along that drawn line. So I'm just putting my ruler right on the line, cutting it in half. The next step is to iron all of these open. So I like to take the lighter fabric, which is this one, and put it down on my ironing board. And then I kind of peel this open and I'm trying to be careful that the seam stays nice and straight. So I just pat it down a little bit, then put my iron on it and then add steam. And the last step is to take these little extra pieces that are sticking off the ends, they're called dog ears, and trim those off so they're even with the edges of the block. Now we have a nice, neat block. The first stack is all done, and I'm going to use the exact same procedure to do these other three stacks. 
Now one note, if you have a stripe like I have here, I like to draw all of my lines on these going the same orientation. I'm not going to do some this way and some this way. I'm going to do them all the same in both stacks. It makes the blocks a little more balanced when they're done. So let me go ahead and get these all stitched up real quick. All the stacks are done now and the next step is to take four of each over to the sewing machine. Now the pattern has a very nice diagram that will show you exactly what goes where and you do need to use that so that you can make sure you have your block laid out correctly. So basically we're going to end up with a couple of chevrons in our block and a pinwheel in the middle. There. What we have now is a couple of dark chevrons, a couple of light green chevrons. We have a pinwheel in the middle with these stripes. So what I like to do is lay out the first block, double check it with the diagram, and once this one is sewn together, I'll use this as the sample to lay out the rest of my blocks, and then they're all much easier to lay out. Now I'm going to sew these row at a time. So I'm going to start at the bottom here. So I'm going to take these first two pieces, put them right sides together, take it over to the machine, and you can either put it back here so you know you've got it correct and add the next one, or you can leave it over by your needle and just grab the next piece, whichever is easiest for you. So I know that that last piece is going to go over here, so I can just put it here. And once the whole row is done, I'm going to finger press all of these seams to the right. So I'm going to open them up. I'm just pulling them open a little bit like this, making sure that seam is facing the way I want it to go and then drawing my fingertip or my fingernail right down the seam. Now I'll make the next row and we'll iron those seams or finger press those seams in the opposite direction. Now we're going to take these first two rows and sew them together. And since I alternated the directions of the seam allowances, they will be going in opposite directions every time they come together and it makes it very easy to get those intersections to match. These long seams here, you can just press them all to one side. I just press them all the same direction. So the block is done now. It's a nice block, but this is one of those quilts that you have an interesting block, but I really have no idea what the quilt will look like after we make all the blocks. So I'm gonna get them stitched up so that I can lay them out, and then I'm really excited to see what the quilt will look like. All right, the blocks are all done. Now we can lay out the quilt. It's very easy because the blocks only go two ways. They go this way or they get turned 90 degrees. So everyone either stays the same or gets turned 90 degrees. So now we can see the secondary pattern showing up. See these big swirls of light? We've got five big ones. And then there's little secondary patterns that are showing as well. And if you take a look at this area here, this is why I wanted the stripe all going the same way when I cut the half square triangles so that I would get them going different ways where they meet here and I think that looks better. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch all the blocks together, get the border on, get it loaded onto the quilting machine. The quilt is all loaded on the machine and we need to pick a thread color. Any of these will work I don't think the quilting is really going to show a whole lot, no matter which color we use, but let's reel some off and see. So the white, it's going to blend in everywhere. Now this is a green that is not exactly the same color as the green that's in there, but it catches all of these colors very well. So remember, you don't have to use the same exact color that's in the quilt to have the quilting look good. So this again, it's going to blend in. 
This is the darkest one, so this one may show a little bit. Let's see. So it's going to show a little bit in the white, but it's not going to fight with it. And then we have this medium lavender. Again, it's going to show a little bit in the white. Let's put it over here so we can see a little bit in the green. I think this will look the best. The quilt has so many pretty flowers in it that I thought I would like to quilt it in flowers as well. This is called Botanical Blossoms, and I like it because it has a couple different shapes of flowers and it has that nice leaf in it. The Twirling Stars quilt is all done. I'm very happy with how it turned out because you can see a lot of different things going on. Here's the big light twirling stars. There's five of them. But after you look at it for a while, there's also dark twirling stars. I like quilts like this where the more you look at it, the more you see. And here's where the four blocks came together and we've got the stripes going in different directions. And this is where the other blocks come together. You've got all four lights there. And remember, that just came from making one block and turning it different ways. The quilting looks good. The lavender thread shows up nicely. I use this nice lavender binding. That's the same as the fabric that's on the back here. And if you look, you can see the quilting pretty well here because it's almost a solid. So it came out 64 by 64 inches, which is a nice throw size, and that's using one yard each of five prints. Of course, if you got two yards each of five prints, you could make it quite a bit bigger. Thanks so much for watching our video today on how to make the Twirling Stars quilt. We hope you enjoyed it. Now at the end of every video, we do a giveaway. And because Christmas is almost here, we're doing a Christmas quilt. This is Trip Around the World, and we did make this in a video. It's a nice puffy quilt. It's hand tied. So you see these yarns here? We went down through all the layers and we tied them. And it's not just decorative, it's very durable. I use quilts like these at home with ties. I've used them for 20 years and they last just wonderfully well. Now this is all Christmas prints, like I said. These are Christmas blossom. Beautiful poinsettias on the back side. And it's very easy to enter the giveaway. All you do is click the link right below the video. It says giveaway and you put in your name and your email address and we can send this to a winner anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.